this can be given a second chance. Be my guest. How do you make money for nothing? Oh, that looks very sporty. The answer could be hiding in the 30 million tonnes of household waste we throw out every year. You never told me it was this heavy. <laughs> yeah. That's why designer Jackie Joseph wants to get her hands on things before they hit the skip. That looks interesting. I'm a fashion designer turned upcycler with a keen eye for style. I take old, unwanted and abandoned things and transform them into on-trend treasures. And then I sell them for a profit. And with some of the country's elite designers and makers... I come bearing a gift. Really interesting. Whatever we do needs to pack a punch. She can transform her finds into desirable... I have never seen that done before. You're good. Valuable... I, I'm literally speechless. ..and hopefully saleable items. I had to put my glasses on, they're so bright. If Jackie is successful, then she can hand the profits back to the very people who had no idea there was cash to be made from their trash. Joking! You are joking! It's a busy day at the Altrincham Recycling Centre in Greater Manchester. And it looks like the locals have had a night on the tiles. But upcycler Jackie Joseph has been up since the crack of dawn and is ready to pounce on people's unwanted items before they hit the skip. Is that your front park? Yeah, that's heavy. Oh, another man with heavy stuff. What's going on today? Jack is leaving no stone unturned in her quest to find three things with the potential to produce profit. At the recycling centre, you never know what's going to turn up. But that is the exciting part of it. I'd better get on with it. I love it when I see a trailer. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, if only it was stuffed with cash. Rob's arrived. But will Jackie think his rubbish is rich pickings? Wow. This is amazing. I, that looks so comfortable. I was about to sit down before you came along. Hi, I'm Jackie. What's your name? My name's Rob. Rob. Lovely to meet you, Rob. Loving this chair. It looks so comfortable. I acquired it from my father-in-law about four years ago, along with another one which is no longer in existence. So why are you throwing it away? Unfortunately, we have a black city and my wife doesn't like the contrast with the brown. Oh, I see. Now, what's your wife's name? Alison. Alison. So Alison told you, Rob, yes. get rid. Yeah, it's got to go. <laughs> and for, it was in the back garden last year. I used it? it when the sun was out, yes. Oh, not but, comfy. Um, this year, we've had a big clear out. Oh, wow. Are you kind of sad to see it go? I am, I am. Well, I really like it. I really do. I think there's something really cool about it. Would you mind if I took your chair away? No, not at all. But if I can do something with it, I'll come back and show you what I've done with it. Is that all right? Smashing. That's amazing, Rob. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Jackie's first find is a well-worn recliner. Any thoughts on how she might update it, Rob? I've absolutely no idea whatsoever. I do know that the leather's in a very poor condition, so it won't be in that colour, I'm sure. Knowing Jackie, Rob, you might be right. Yes, there are a few things that I don't like about it. The leather has seen better days. The base is a little bit rusty, but I still love it. And I think in the right hands, this can be really groovy again. And Jackie knows just who can give this chair its groove back. It's Leanne Treadwell. Leanne is to upholstery what Einstein is to sciencey stuff. Her imaginatively out there colour explosions make every chair that leaves her workshop a masterpiece. Every single colour, I'm not afraid of them, and I don't think anyone should be afraid of colour. There's plenty of joy to be found through your eyeballs if you just splash a bit of colour around. Old chairs are really well made. That means you can keep reupholstering them. You can make it fit into your world for that one little snippet of this entire life. Chairs just keep on living if you let them. But will Leanne still have a lust for life when she sees what Jack is sending her way?
With one item saved, Jack is walking up and down the bays in search of a second hidden gem. Even walking backwards. <laughs> is that some new kind of boot spotting dance you've been working on, Jackie? Yeah, because then I can look forwards and then look backwards as well. Let's call it the boot scoot to the left and to the right. Jeannie and her pooch Jess have had some help unloading, but will Jackie think their rubbish is worth scooting over for? Wow. These look very rusty. <laughs> yes, they My are. Name's a bit. Jackie, what's yours? Jeannie. Jeannie. And, and who's this gorgeous thing? This is Jess. Hi, Jess. Yes. So are these yours? Yes. Yes, they are. They? How long have you had them for? About 20 years, possibly 20 years. longer. What, have they been in the garden or something? Um, they have for the last three years. So how did you use it in the house then? I would say sort of things in boxes. Yeah, okay. So it was like very much things in boxes went on the shelves. But why are you getting rid of them? Because they're rusty and, <laughs> yeah. and difficult to move around for me and yeah. they're quite sharp and... Time for it to, to get go. rid, yeah. But I just think there could be a little bit of life that could be eked out of them. Would you mind if I took these? No. Take, take them. <laughs> Good. So if I take them, if I'm able to do anything with them, I'll come back and show you what I've done. Yeah, I'm really curious what can be done with them. <laughs> Lovely. Take care. Right. Thank you, Jeannie. Thank you. Jackie's bagged some rusty old shelves. Any idea what she'll do with them, Jess? No? How about you, Jeannie? For some sort of ornament, it would be really interesting to see. I'm with you, Jess. They're pretty rough. But there was something about them. I thought we could just squeeze a little bit of life out of them. And I know just the person who can breathe new life into these. But which maker can Jackie trust with all that rust? Kev Paxton. Kev is a blacksmith who specialises in turning scrap metal into one-off pieces of functional art. The fact that I can take old pieces of scrap metal and then turn it into something where a, a cool new life is, is really good. I wouldn't describe what I do as a job. OK, it pays my bills, but I do it for the love. Um, and I just, I just feel very privileged that I can you know, hit a piece of hot metal and turn it into something that people like, smile about. And that, that's, that's what you know, drives me forward, is people smiling at what I do. There's a sad shelving unit heading your way, Kev, but you could have a big job making it something to smile about. That's two items secured, but as the day draws to a close... Wow, this is a cool, cool vehicle. What are you throwing away today? Profits. Jackie still needs to find something she can work on herself. And I hold on, hold on. Jackie's spotted Val and Teresa unloading their car. But has she spied anything special inside it? Oh, hi there. Hello. Hello. How are you? My name's Jackie. What's yours? My name is Val, and this is Teresa. Teresa. Lovely to meet you. Nice to see you. I was uh, admiring that watering can. How long have you had it? Well, it's been in our possession, we say, about 30 years. 30 years? And uh, it, it was in the house when we moved into the house. So what age do you reckon that is, then? Well, I'd say at least 50 years old. Yeah. So did you use it in the 30 years that you kind of inherited it? Oh, yes, we've used it, yeah. So why are you throwing it away now? Yeah. Well, it has developed a leak. Oh, there's a hole in your watering can. That's it, no, that's it. <laughs> yes. Oh, I see. It's quite charming, isn't it? It is it's nice, yes. Yeah. Would you mind, Val and Teresa, if I took this off your hands, I'll keep in touch yeah. and I'll come back and show you. Yeah, Is well, that all right? It'd be lovely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, amazing. Thank yeah. you very, very much. Yeah. Nice Take to meet care. you. You too. Nice to Take care. To Bye. You. Jackie's got an old and leaky watering can. Not a clue what she'll do with that. Teresa, Val, any ideas? I'm sure she will come up with something. Sure she will. Yeah. Yeah. A plant pot and uh, use it in the garden, you know. There's not loads of material, but I do think with a bit of creative thinking and a lot of TLC, this old watering can 
can have a new lease of life. And with that, Jackie has her haul. Leanne's challenge is to somehow revive the well-worn recliner. Kev will attempt to take the rusted shelves from skip bound to stylish. And Jackie is going to pour her efforts into repurposing the redundant watering can. Well, I've bagged three eclectic items, all with one thing in common. They're oozing potential. Now, my job is to make them shine. In the vibrant city of Bristol, Jackie's on her way to Leanne's workshop. She's taken delivery of the leather recliner and is wasting no time in giving it a spin. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm excited. I mean, it's got foam, this is already torn. But, um, yeah, great project, great find. This is brilliant. So that old recliner is with Leanne. She won't have any time to uh, relax with this one because there's going to be a lot of work to do. Hi, Leanne. And I see you've got the chair. <laughs> it's what amazing. Do you, what do you think? You like it? Yeah. I like the style of it. I like the shape of it. But it's tatty. Yeah, the fabric definitely needs an update, doesn't it? Do you know what I like? I do like the idea of like some like deep. Buttoning. The only thing that worries me yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> is I've met this kind of chair before and they don't tend to reupholster well because <gasps> the way they're manufactured, I'd have to take it apart very carefully to in order me to maintain this shape. And then what we're we thinking about fabric-wise, are we thinking something sumptuous, something that you can really sort of squidge into? Wait, you know, I love a velvet, so why not? Maybe it's got to be a velvet. There's a lot to do here. What are we talking budget-wise? Around about £350. I'm very, very happy with that. Thank you so, so much. I will leave this in your capable hands and I'll see you soon. Thanks, Jackie. Bye. Take care, bye. bye. <laughs> it's going to absolutely kill my hands because I imagine it's going to be so much hand sewing, but it's going to be so worth it. I'm excited. I want to get going right now. Leanne has a budget of £350 to overhaul the recliner with a luxurious new look. But will her ambitious plan of a deep button design land her in deep water? On the outskirts of Edinburgh, the master of metal Kev has received the old rusty shelves. This unit has spent years outside and is on its last legs, but can Kev see another use for it? They're like the old-fashioned shell set, paint cans or the clippers were on, but um, they're quite flimsy, so it'll be interested to see what Jackie has to say about them. Kev's not sounding inspired. Let's hope Jackie has something in mind. Hello. Hi, Kev. How are you doing? Hi, Jackie. I'm good, thanks. Who are you? Yeah, I'm doing well, thanks. Good. So, what do you make of the shelves, then? Can you see past the rust? Quite flimsy, um, but I'm sure we can do something with them. I know. It's not in great condition, but I thought it could still be usable if you were able to reinforce the shelves and just jazz it up a bit. So, I get what you're saying about shelves. They may, you know, like quite cool, but... I'm actually looking at it that, you know, the shelf size is almost perfect for a console table. Oh, yeah. It would work well as a console table. So you could use, you know, one of the shelves as the tabletop. Maybe add text as very, listen, very flimsy, but I could strengthen that. Love that idea. Is there something decorative you could do with the rest? Because there's quite a bit of metal there. Um, the rest of it, I can, you know, forge that up and make it into something, it's, you know, maybe a, a thistle or something, or, you know, something quite quirky. Oh, that sounds really cool, Kev. But it could take a lot of work. So, how much would it cost? Well, uh, put maybe glass or wood or something over the top of it, a thistle, so I'm probably going to need about 700. That is a big budget, but... If it's going to be a one-of-a-kind console, I think that's fair. Just let me know when it's ready. All right, Jackie, no problems at all. Thanks, Kev. Bye. Bye-bye. 
Jackie seems quite happy with my idea of turning the shelves into a console table. I've promised her a couple of twists, so I better get cracking. Kev has a big budget of £700 to try and convert the flimsy shelves into a console table. The devil will be in the detail for this project, so will he have enough material to deliver the decorative touches Jack is expecting? In London, Jack is back on home turf. But she's not off to water her plants. Uh, this obviously doesn't belong to it. She's looking for a seed of inspiration on how to repurpose the old watering can. I'm thinking maybe something a bit more decorative for the garden or for just display it. I'm not sure yet. But obviously, the first thing I've got to do is get rid of all of that dirt, that grime and all the weathering and then see what ideas come to mind. The watering can design that we know today was patented by John Hawes in 1886. This is just some soapy water. With its long balanced spout and rose head, making it easy to carry around and tip. I'd look a bit like this if I was kept outside in all weathers. <laughs> this one has a leak where water isn't supposed to come out. So Jack is using a silicon sealant to repair it. I'm happy with that. Time to get painting. Jack has decided to paint the watering can in the hopes of putting it back on display in someone's home or garden. So I wasn't brave enough to just start painting on the watering can straight away. So I've done a little sketch of my interpretation of floral meadow. So that's going to go on one side, and then on the other side, I'm going to make my own interpretation of folk art. Yeah, it's a simple art, but it's effective. Sometimes you'll see all of this sort of um, open floral designs, normally on a black background. That's traditionally called folk art. Jack is hoping some flower power is what's needed to get the watering can looking blooming good. She's practising her design on paper, but painting onto the metal could be much more difficult. So, this is the moment of truth. Let's get painting. Jackie needs a steady hand as she tries to copy her floral design... <laughs> Gulp. ..onto the first half of the watering can. Look, I'm shaking. This is tense. This is the tense bit. She's using acrylic paint, which will adhere to the metal and is fast drying. I'm actually surprising myself. This is not bad. My A-level art has come useful at last. <laughs> Jack is no longer shaking like a leaf, but that's only side number one. I've definitely decided to take photos, and those photos are going to create more profit. Watch this space. Only another 12,000 florals to do. So far, Jack has only spent £2.50 on this project. She's going to be attempting two different hand-painted designs, but will they double her chances of finding a buyer or just make things twice as difficult? In Bristol, Leanne is hard at work trying to update the old leather recliner. First, she's cleaning up the chrome with aluminium foil, which, due to its chemical makeup, can break down and polish the patches that have oxidised. Oh, it shines up real nice, doesn't it? And the foil is nice and soft, so won't scratch the chrome. I've got to recreate this technique, but not using the same vacuum formed methods that they have done for production line, but using deep buttoning, which is a really old, beautiful um, technique. Leanne needs to get under the skin of the chair while keeping the classic design and the factory produced shape intact. It's like I'm unleashing a suitcase. Of... OK, so let's just peel forward. I'm really relieved that this foam is in good enough condition to be reused. 
So yeah, that means that I don't have to replace any of the stuffing. Perfect. As the foam already meets fire safety standards, Leanne's able to cross one job off her list. I definitely... I'm hoping for an easier refit than that. With the fabric finally removed, Leanne is planning out her deep buttoning design. You keep going offsetting the dimension and then you end up with this diamond formation. And it's just going to accentuate the, the shape of the seat. Next, she's using a foam hole cutter to create spaces where buttons will be attached. That wasn't so good. It's torn all that. Uh-oh. If Leanne keeps up like this, the original foam will end up like Swiss cheese. Uh. Or even more like Swiss cheese. All I need to do now is pick the fabric. Maybe this one. I haven't, I haven't actually decided. <laughs> Leanne has a selection of green linen fabrics that she's going to use to recover the chair and to make the all-important buttons. I reckon I've made over a billion buttons. That is a lot of buttons, Leanne. Have you checked your sums? There is a lot, though. I reckon at least every weekend for the last 10 years, I've made 200. So that's actually around 100,000 buttons. Pretty impressive. It's not quite a billion, is it? No, not quite. <laughs> it feels like a gazillion. <laughs> well, today alone you've made 30 to add to your tally. And she's planning to fasten them onto the recliner with twine. OK, so with buttoning, the rule is... There are no... No, there are rules. Um, you start with this needle that has two points at either end. And I'm going to send that through the back of the chair. Get one of these guys, thread that on one of them, and that back holds the button in place there. Deep buttoning was introduced during the Victorian era as a way to improve comfort. This traditional technique consists of buttons being compressed, then stitched under tension. Because the fabric is fire retardant. It's extra stiff, so I'm finding it quite hard on my hands. But it's a beautiful process, so worth the pain. Well, Leanne, you know what they say? No pain, no gain. Just outside Edinburgh, Kev's already making a start dismantling the shelves. Go for sparks, it always works. He's promised Jackie a console table with some sculptural flourishes and is using an angle grinder to cut through the rusted screws to see exactly how much material he has to work with. So this stuff is all one mulberry look at. How I work with hammers and anvils, you know, it's just not good enough to do that. So what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to sort of roll this up tight. I want to see the holes remain in. This has got to sort of be the, the stem of my thistle. In the head, it's working just now, so let's hope it does OK. With the rusted screws gone, Kev is carefully removing the rest by hand so as not to risk ruining the limited material he has. I wonder what they've held. Many stories have they got over the years. Like, way back in the 60s, the guy said to his wife, you know, I'm just going down the pot and shed to do some plants. But I had like a wee cheeky bottle of whiskey there and he was having a wee nap. So it wasn't just the plants that were coming up half cut. I kind of like the thought of that. So that's one set done. I think I'm going to use this one as the base for the tabletop. I'm going to cover this. You'll see the edge. I'm going to cover this over. I'm not decide if I'm going to do it with glass or ridge it. As the one millimetre thick metal is too flimsy to support the shelves that will become the top of his console, Kev is adding steel bars to his table design. Our Scottish man of steel is bending them into shape using brute strength. Well, and a set of horns in a vice. So that's roughly... roughly what I'm looking for. Sorry if we haven't gone with it. Now Kev's challenge is to turn the rest of the material into decorative details including a thistle stem forged from the metal frame. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this hot now. Uh, and I'm going to sort of attempt to sort of roll it up nice and tight. So I'm just going to take the corner out of it first. The hammer I'm using uh, is probably a bit big for this because it's so light metal. But me and this hammer, we've got so much history together. Seems like Kev really can forge anything, from metal shelves to lifelong bonds with tools in his workshop. Kev is tightly winding the metal and should be wearing eye protection as he tries to create a cylindrical stem. What that, that's doing is making the stem stronger. So it's rolled round and the holes have almost lined up. So these two holes here, when it's been rolled, it's almost lined up. It's like a meta. I'll pretend I'm in it. With the stem taking shape, Kev is turning his attention to the thistle head, the prickles of which will be made from squares of the metal shelves. So the metal's that thin, it's just burning away. This is going to be problematic. The flimsy material isn't cutting it. That's a better one. I'll not let Jackie down. Hopefully not. Good luck, Kev. Jackie might bristle at the thought of a console with no thistle. In London, Jackie's finished her decorative watering can project, which looks as if it's sprouted some other items too. Wow. These look super, super fresh. The vintage watering can had been well used, but had sprung a leak and was heading for the skip. But now... It's come up roses and daisies and lots of other flowers too, thanks to Jackie's colourful redesign. One half has been painted in a folk art-inspired style, while the other is adorned with a meadow motif. And Jackie was so pleased with her artwork that she's had images of the can printed on tea towels in the hope that their colourful country style will make their way into people's kitchens. But has she done enough to give the old watering can a bright future? So you've got the folk art side, then you've got the more meadow floral side against that galvanised steel, which looks really good. This would be really nice, uh, maybe for dried flowers or for some gorgeous faux flowers. But have a look at the tea towels. Don't they look great? I must say, the artwork looks pretty good. <laughs> and especially against the white, and it looks really fresh. I've got 25 in total, so I'm going to take some photos and hopefully find them all new homes. At the recycling centre, Val and Teresa's watering can caught Jackie's eye. I was uh, admiring that watering can. It's been in our possession, we say, about 30 years. So why are you throwing it away now? Well, it has developed a leak. Oh, there's a hole in your watering can. <laughs> That's it now. That's it. <laughs> it was no longer of any use to them, and Val and Teresa were hopeful Jackie could save it. I'm sure she will come up with something. Sure she will, yeah. yeah. I've planned pot and uh, use it in the garden, you know. Well, Teresa, it would make a unique plant pot, and the tea towels are a bonus addition. And after it was advertised online, the watering can was sold to a private buyer. But did Jackie manage to sell the tea towels too? She's in Timperley to catch up with Val and Teresa to show them what's happened to the old watering can and hopefully pass on some cash. Teresa! Hello, Jackie. Nice Hi, to see you again. You? How are you both? Not Hi. bad at all. You well, lovely to see you both again. Well, the last time we met, you were throwing away an old watering can. Yeah, it was here when we moved into this house, oh. which was over 30 years ago. We met you at the dump and then we thought maybe we could have done something ourselves, you know? <laughs> yeah. It was a bit late then. Well, actually, it was something that I took on myself. Would you like to see what I did with it? Yeah. Yeah. OK. Oh, 
That's lovely. Yeah, yeah. I decided to paint both sides, so you've got two different views. So then I took photos of the cans, and then I had them made into tea towels. Very nice. And you yes, did all that yeah. yourself? Yes. Jeez. Very talented. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you like it. Well, look, got some profit for you. £187. Oh, <laughs> it seems like you weren't expecting anything. No, I didn't think that. You didn't think you'd want anything. It's all your hard work, though, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And what might you do with that money? Well, the church we go to has been renovated. Yeah. OK. So I think we'll give it to them. Yeah. Yeah. That's lovely. Thank you very much for allowing me to take your watering can. Great. Take care. Bye. 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 Jackie spent £210 on paint and having her custom tea towels printed. The watering can and tea towels sold for a total of £397, leaving Val and Teresa with a profit of £187 that they're going to donate to their local church. Jackie's completed her rescue mission so she's in Bristol to see if Leanne has managed to give new life to the old leather recliner. The fabric is very different to what I started with. That happens sometimes. I'm just hoping that Jackie likes that. Well, that chair I left with Leanne is not really her style. I think it may have been a bit of a challenge. I'm hoping she's managed to pull it off. When Jackie found it, the recliner had been well used and it showed. But Leanne got to work, and now... It's been given a whole new spin. Leanne had a change of heart about the green linen, instead opting to recover the chair in a marble grey wool. She's hand-sewn rows of precisely placed deep buttons to try and create the traditional look she was aiming for. And she's added teal-coloured piping to contrast against a muted fabric. The chrome base has been polished up and all of the upholstery meets fire safety standards. But will Jackie think it fits the brief? Leanne? Wow. That's incredible. Wait, hold on, hold on a minute. That's not velvet. I thought, well, to sew it, because all of this is hand-stitched, that would be an, a nightmare on my hands. So I thought, make easier work for myself, I'll use a linen. And I did the buttons beautifully in this green linen fabric. And then when I went to do the outsides here, this concave shape, the linen was awful to work with. So then I thought, right, I need wool. I must admit, actually, the marbling effect, that's actually accentuated it, hasn't it? Suits the shape. And I like the way that you've done with the piping. It's also got almost that slight scallop edge to it, which gives it a nice softness also. Does it still lean back? It does, yeah. Still works <sighs> as the beautiful recliner that it, that it was previously. So, with all of that work, <laughs> everything that you did, <laughs> how did we do on the budget? I sewed this last layer of fabric so quickly and easily because it's wool. So, yeah, we're in budget. Thank you so much, Leanne. I absolutely adore it. It's got a gorgeous softness to it. So, thank you so much. Always lovely to see you, Leanne. You too. Take Thanks, care. Jackie. Thanks. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. I'm so pleased that this actually paid off and it's just going to look stunning in someone's home, no matter what the style. It's definitely comfy and cosy. When Jackie met Rob, he was getting rid of his old recliner. Wow. So why are you throwing it away? Unfortunately, we have a black city and my wife doesn't like the contrast. Are you kind of sad to see it go? I am, I am. Jackie saved the seat from being given the heave-ho. Bye. Bye. And Rob agreed it was time for an update. But I do know that the leather's in a very poor condition, so it won't be in that colour, I'm sure. You were right, Rob. But will you like its new marbled look? Someone certainly did, as after being advertised online, the recliner was sold to a cafe and interior centre in Redditch. Manager Dylan is delighted with it. Yeah, really happy with the chair. 
It's got a real nice upholstery finish on it. Um, the mechanisms work great and it's uh, on trend with the mid-century. Jack is in Timperley to show Rob the recliner's new look and to pass on the profit. Hey, Rob, how are you? I'm fine, hello, how are you? I'm very, very well. Um, now, of course, with the recliner, you did have nice, sort of comfortable years with it. Oh, yeah, quite a number of years, yes. It helped me considerably. I'm recovering from bladder cancer and I used it to... Um, Instead of sitting on the sofa, I could recline back and get a comfortable of position. Course. Well, it was something that I took to an amazing uh, designer upholsterer called Leanne. Right. And I'm going to just show you what Leanne has done to your chair. Oh, look at that. That's fantastic. Absolutely. I'm so pleased. It looks absolutely pristine. Fantastic. Oh, good. Yeah, because I, I love the fabric that she used because she's giving it a softness to to the recliner yeah um, and then she's piped it just to let that that gray pop a little bit more yeah she's obviously very very clever yeah she is very very clever indeed and actually somebody else likes it i've got a bit of profit for you rob i've got 30 pounds for your chair fantastic thank you very much and what might you do with that money because the chair was from my uh, father-in-law and he suffered with alzheimer's Half's going to go towards the Alzheimer's Society, and I think we'll put a couple more pounds towards the Macmillan people who've been looking after me. So, thank you very much. Two worthy causes. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Look, thank you so much. It was lovely to catch up with you. And you. Thank you very much. Lovely. OK, take Bye. care. Bye. 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 Leanne came in on budget at £350. The recliner was sold for £380, leaving Rob with a profit of £30 that he's going to add some cash to and donate to two charities that have supported him and his family. With two items heading off to new homes, Jack is in Edinburgh to see if Kev can make it a hat-trick of transformations with the old shelves. So this was a really difficult project to work on. Um, the metal just wasn't playing ball, um, but I'm delighted with the way it's turned out and I just hope Jack is as happy as I am. Well, I left Kev some metal shelves. They weren't looking their best, but I was thinking, should we just keep them as shelves? Kev had other ideas, and I'm hoping he's going to give me one of his special twists. When Jackie found the shelves, they'd been left outside for years and were heading for the skip. But now... Kev's brought them in from the cold by repurposing them as a contemporary console table. One shelf has been reused as the table's surface and topped with toughened glass to put the worn patina on show. Kev used heavy steel bars as the base and has handcrafted a metal thistle to try and create the wow factor Jackie was after. He used the remaining material to forge the head, stem and leaves that entwine around the legs. He's really tried to make the most of the flimsy metal, but will Jackie be impressed? Kev. Hi, Jackie, how are you? I'm very well, even better now. You like it? <laughs> that is never the shelves. The top part, that is just the shelf as was. And if you see, even see the thistle stem. Yeah. So that's like the legs. Oh, yes. All rolled up. And do you know what the, I, I love? When you said you were going to give me some special care. Yeah, the wee additions. butterflies. That's just the same, just made out of the, the oh, angles yeah. too. So again, just cut the metal up, roll it up, and, you know, that's another wee extra quirk. I absolutely love it. Now, I left you with a budget of £700. I know there's a lot of work that's gone into this. How did we do on that? I'm happy with the budget. I'm, I'm just delighted that you're delighted with it. So it's just got this sort of elegant but roughness to it. And I, I Sounds like Sounds like you're describing yourself there. A little bit of roughness to it. A little bit rough, but not, never elegant. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Kev, thank you so much. I shall get that picked up and I shall see you very soon. No problems. Take thank care. you. Take care. Bye. See you later. So it was a challenge to work on it, it was just so flimsy, but it's there now and uh, I'm delayed. 
When Jackie spotted Jeannie and her pooch Jess, they were saying goodbye to the metal shelves. Wow. These look very rusty. How long have you had them for? About 20 years. But why are you getting rid of them? Because they're rusty and, <laughs> yeah. and difficult to move around for me and yeah. they're quite sharp and... Time for you to, to get, get rid, yeah. The shelves had served their purpose. Take care. Right. Thank you, Jeannie. Thank you. But Jackie saw their potential. Jess didn't know what to make of it, but Jeannie had an idea of what they could become. With some sort of ornament. It would be really interesting to see. Well, it's an ornate console table, Jeannie, so you were half right. And after being advertised online, it found a new home with a private buyer. Jack is in Hale to show Jeannie the transformation and hand over the profit. Fine, thank you. Oh, and this is Jess. Yes. Uh, yeah, yes. That's right. So, of course, I met yourself at the recycling centre. Yes. And you were about to get rid of some metal shelving, weren't you? Yeah, we're just sitting in the garden, really. They weren't do serving any purpose at that point. Did you ever think what might have become of them? Maybe some other, like a shelf, but put together differently or even just stripped down completely and shaped into something. Your shelves went to a great designer called Kev. Would you like to see what he's done? Oh, yes, please. So they have become this console table. Wow, we... That is amazing. Oh, my gosh! Do you recognise it? Because he's, he's used every wow. single component. I, I want to imagine that in a million years. Well, someone else loved it, actually, so it was sold, so I've got some profit for you. £551. <laughs> yeah, you seem really shocked. Yeah, <laughs> rusty old shelves. Good <laughs> grief. And so, if you don't mind me asking, what might you do with that money, Jeannie? I think weekend away. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Spa hotel. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Bit of fizz. <laughs> yes. I'll take your sister as well. <laughs> Very good, yeah. Well, look, it was lovely to catch up with you again and enjoy your spa break. Thank you. See you, Jeannie. Bye. Bye, Jess. Bye. 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 Kev came in on budget at £700. The console table was sold for £1,251 meaning Jeannie has a profit of £551. That she's going to spend on a relaxing spa break with her sister. Lovely. Jackie saved three items from being scrapped. New life has bloomed for the old watering can. The recliner has been rejuvenated and is ready to be loved again. And the metal shelves have a totally new use and have been sent off to a new home. Turning tired items into things to be treasured is no mean feat, but we got there in the end. So that's three skip finds being given a second chance. And now they're all off to new homes.